Here's the kicker, Jason Myers, to get this one started. And off we go from M&T Bank Stadium. The Ravens offense going to work, and as usual, it's Lamar Jackson, the former MVP of the league, at the helm. And he remains the league's premier rushing threat and one of the biggest playmakers among quarterbacks. His goal each and every season, continue to expand his game as a passer and become well-rounded. All those highlight reel plays you see, they come off the fact that he can run it, throw it, and scares defenses every time he takes a snap. The drive starts with a carry by Edwards. And he will lose yardage on the play back at his own 19-yard line. Call it officially a loss of two on the first play from scrimmage. Second down. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. Again, it's Edwards. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. But you got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. A tough spot here on their opening drive. This is third and seven. Jackson now. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That's a play that may get lost in the grand scheme of things, but one thing's for sure. You certainly don't want to go three and out to start the game. So that's a nice job of finding the right play call and coming up with a first down. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. First carry now for Justice Hill. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to huddle feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run. But the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. Jackson going to give this one to Edwards. And the defense on him quickly there as they stop him at the 40 for a gain of just two. Here's Jackson to throw. That is caught, and he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. Give him 22 there on the third down conversion. Let's go, man. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 39-yard line. They go play action now. Jackson, that's into the hands of Flowers over the middle. And they'll get this one to about the 20-yard line. It's another first down as they look his way again, this time 19 yards. That's the third time on this drive that these two have connected with each other. They've got a real rapport going, and right now it's paying off a big chunks of yardage as shown by that last play. This will be a five-yard pickup as they move it from the 20 to the 15. Pretty good first down play. Keeps them ahead of schedule, as they say. And ostensibly, they could go right back to it because there are multiple options on this play. Hand it inside. Quarterback tucks it and keeps it. Quarterback throws the ball downfield. You should be able to react to the defense and have an option available on every snap. Out of the gun, they give to Edwards. They stopped after only a yard, taking it down to the 14. Let's do what we do. 
Here is third down and four. To throw is Jackson. He's got his target. That's complete. And the Ravens are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Uh, that's a big conversion there on third down, and this has been a great opening drive. You know, at this point, they'd hate to settle for three, but they've created a fresh set of downs and a first and goal. A terrific opening drive has them knocking on the door, first and goal. Edwards. Oh, he's going absolutely nowhere as he is hit behind the line. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. On second and goal, here's an option play left. And he'll get in. Touchdown, Baltimore. Lamar Jackson. A four-yard touchdown scamper. And the Ravens get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. Now this defense, so many things to worry about in the red zone area, but you'd have to almost think that Lamar Jackson running the football, that might be number one. It should be number one. And in this portion of the field where things shrink a little bit because the receivers can't run past anyone because they'll run out of real estate, you should have all eyes on Lamar Jackson when the ball is snapped and try and keep him back in the pocket. Yeah, I don't think that they were surprised he was running it there. They just couldn't stop him, and he ends up in the end zone. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Eskridge going to keep this one in the end zone, and they'll start at the 25-yard line. Here come the Seahawks and their offense now under veteran head coach Pete Carroll. And a glance here at their quarterback standing six foot three. If you ask coaches at any level to design their ideal leader of a team, I think they're going to check every box with this guy. He's got the poise to handle responsibility. He stays calm under any kind of pressure. And he brings out the best of his teammates each and every week. Now Smith and the Seahawks going to come up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Throwing now is Geno. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Charles already trailing by touchdown early. This offense, how imperative is it for them to get points out of this drive? Well, they feel like they have to go ahead and match because of what was already on the board against their defense. But I think even more so, you just want to avoid three and outs. You want to be able to stay on the field for a little while, let your defense catch their breath a little bit, even if you don't score any points. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. They'll put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one, forced the incompletion. That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely. Freeze up your guys elsewhere. Throwing on third down, Smith. Open man is Metcalf. He's got it. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That gain on third down, good for 28. And that's a good job there, knuckling down as an offense. You're trying to avoid three and out at all costs. And after two straight incompletions, this one's on target, and they're able to keep the chains moving. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 47. Again, Smith. Man open downfield. It's Metcalf. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop him. 33 yards that time. It's early, but announcer cliche alert here. Big players make big plays. Should I say in big games too? Ah, oh, what the heck. And this defense, they're going to have to find some way to slow him down. As this game goes on, 
because when this combination is going good, they can tear your secondary apart. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. Now here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. Will Disley, the intended receiver, and now it's second down. The leading rusher among rookies a season ago. Here's Kenneth Walker. This will be a loss of three, and now a much tougher third down looming. They had three tight ends in that formation. That's almost a universal sign that they're planning to run the football. But how about the defense there? They met force with force and caused a stack up behind the line of scrimmage and threw him for a loss. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Now he's forced out left. And he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. So no sack. He gets back to the line of scrimmage, but it will still bring up a fourth down. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Seahawk football here to start quarter number two as they've got it with a fourth down coming up. And the first play will be a field goal try from the left hash. This from 34. Myers kick is good and they are on the board but still trailing, it's 7-3. to three. So both teams come away with points on their opening drives. Now they still trail. They answered the touchdown with a field goal, but at least able to break that goose egg here early. And that is what's important, right? Because they didn't let that initial touchdown go unanswered. Took the ball themselves, moved it downfield, and put it through the post for three points. Game on. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. Devin Duvernay now returning from the end zone. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. Baltimore set to take over here for their second possession of the game. Well, certainly they'd rather have the scenario they had last time out, Charles. Remember, they had the short field. They took it in the end zone. Now this is going to have to be a longer, more sustained drive if they want to get points. Yeah, a little bit more of a quick strike opportunity last time by where they were on the field, and you're exactly right about that. But now, backed up a little bit. What's that old expression we love to use? Time to matriculate the ball down the field and try and do it again. Throw caught by Flowers. And hit behind the line. He lost the football. It's loose. And the Seahawks have picked it up. And they're going to get the football just outside the 10 at the 11-yard line. We have seen this before, and we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time. Catch the ball. You know there's going to be some traffic somewhere. They've got to put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield. Seattle's offense coming back onto the field, ready for their second drive. They've got the ball in a great spot here, already inside the red zone following that fumble recovery. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Up the middle, here's Walker. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. That one good for 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second and just about a few inches here. Now it's the rookie from UCLA, Zach Charbonnet. And he is in for the Seattle touchdown. Zach Charbonnet punching it in from a yard away. And the Seahawks have taken the lead. 
Sometimes offensive can get too cute down near the goal line, but there's nothing fancy about this one. As Coach Lombardi would say, we get a seal here, and we get a seal here, and we run this play in the alley. And that's good work to hit the hole hard and finish in the end zone. Extra point up and through by Myers. And the lead is now 10 to 7. After the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. And the offense for the Ravens returns to the field. Charles, you got to think the number one goal here is ball security. Remember last drive, they coughed it up. Then they allowed the touchdown, and now they're trailing on the scoreboard. Boy, the way you described it makes me think that that one actually hurt them three times. The fumble cost them potential points. Then they watched their opponent get a touchdown off of the fumble. And third, they lost the lead as a result. Really tough sequence right there. I don't think coaches have to remind them to hold on to the football. They've just got to find a way to get it done. So the completion good for six yards, and that will bring up second down. They go play action with Jackson. That one into the hands of Flowers. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. Over 70 yards receiving now for him in this first half alone as he's got a first down on that last catch. From the gun, they go to Edwards. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. From the 42 now, here's second and two. Now it's Jackson. That ball caught. It's Mark Andrews, the tight end. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. It's a game of 34. And the offense is saying to itself right now, if only they were all this easy because he was wide open. And once he made the catch, plenty of room to work his way downfield. That was a breakdown on the defensive side of the ball, one that they want to fix immediately. Throwing on first down, it's Jackson. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Offense was moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they earned a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Jackson. He's got the hook up to Odell Beckham. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. Again, Jackson. And this is going to be incomplete. Just what Seattle was hoping for. The coverage holds, and now fourth down. I can assure you setting up a screen is much more difficult than it appears. It requires excellent timing from everyone on the offense, and a defense's number one goal is to throw that timing off. Tucker's kick is good, and that will knot us up at 10. 
So chalk that down as an eight-play drive capped with a field goal. Yeah, as a friend of mine used to say, they were moving and grooving for a while, but they couldn't keep the momentum going enough to get a touchdown out of it. now at 10 apiece as the kicks away from the end zone here comes Eskridge oh a dangerous return man showing it here Dwayne Eskridge and he'll bring it back all the way touchdown Seahawks that was a special return and it happened because he's a special returner. He has to have that approval from his special teams coach's head coach to bring it out of the end zone. But let's be honest, a lot of times where they bring it out of the end zone like he did there, they don't have approval. I mean, I, I think a lot of times they do, but correct me if I'm wrong, sometimes it's just a guy getting a feel, right? Yeah, exactly right. What's the old adage? Sometimes you just have to know when to break the rules, and if you do, you're taking on some responsibility, but he was happy to do so there. Now Myers for the extra point. He's got it as they go up by a total of 17 to 10. Well, we talk a lot about explosive plays on offense. How about an explosive play on special teams? Certainly one there on the kick return for a touchdown. So now the other return teams out there as they'll try to duplicate what they just saw. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. They find themselves down 17-10 as they come up on a first and 10. Now it's Jackson. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Well, they'll certainly be on the tablets going over that one for sure. Clearly, they were expecting something else out of the defense and couldn't adjust to make that completion happen. Now a second and ten. From the gun, it's Jackson. Now a loose football. The ball comes out, and the Seahawks have picked it up. And he is going to get this one back to the 20-yard line. Always costly to cough up that football. These defenders, they become so adept, though, at jarring it free. Yeah, it's amazing that there aren't more fumbles caused because now, if you're an offensive player, you go through ball security drills every single day. It's really not out of line to think you should take the ball to bed with you and just hold on to it. <laughs> but the bottom line is, no matter how much you try to protect it, these guys are pretty good at finding ways to knock it out. And now before the ball changes hands, they're going to take a look at this just to make sure that they have it right. Now the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of the football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. After review of the play, so that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. 
So possession still theirs, but now they face a third down. Here's Jackson. And that is incomplete. These two offenses have gone up and down the field so far in the first half. Finally, finally, I say, here's a stop on third down. Fourth down, and out comes Jordan Stout here to punt. And back deep is DJ Dallas. This is fielded at the 27. It'll be a 44-yard punt, six on the return. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. They're starting to put some space here. The you know, first quarter, they didn't look so hot offensively. This second quarter, though, they've looked really good. They've jumped in the saddle in a big way now, and now they're in full gallop. I mean, before, <laughs> kind of cantering around a little bit, right, trying to feel their way, not getting done what they wanted to. But somehow they put it together with play calling, execution, and now there's a pretty big gap. And they'll look to make that gap even bigger here. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 11 yards for number 11. Well, certainly as a fan, you get a little bit nervous when you see him make those kind of throws. But they work on that in practice more than we know. And most of them now know their limits and know what they can get away with. And there's a completion right there. Walker now on first and 10. And across midfield he goes into Raven territory. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Here's second and three. Sticking with Walker on second down. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. Seven yards there and a first down. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Off of play action, here's Smith. Short throw to Disley. It'll be a gain of just a yard, and it'll be second down. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. They work now on second and nine. Smith. He finds Smith and Jigba. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens 28. 12 yards there as they move the chains. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage. And that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, a sharply run route. Again, zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area. So you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. He didn't just deny a big throw there. He broke that one up in the red zone. An excellent play, one that may help save points on the board when this drive is over. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and ten. Geno out of throw. He'll find Metcalf. And they'll get him down inside the red zone at the 14. It's also a gain of 14. First down. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open. Just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. From the red zone now, Smith. And he finds Lockett in the end zone. Touchdown, Seattle. A 14-yard touchdown. And the Seahawks will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. 
CD for them. This has just been an offensive explosion here in the second quarter. Yeah, held scoreless in the first quarter. Now they find the end zone again here in the second. Sometimes you just have to have some patience. A lot of people think it's always an adjustment. You have to change what you're doing. Sometimes you just have to do your game plan just a little bit better. And I think that's part of what we're seeing here. Myers connects on the PAT. And the lead now up to 14. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. And this taken in at the goal line. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. The Raven offense going to take over late in this first half. Well, not much time remains here in this first half. We'll see if they can get something out of this drive, at least a field goal. They could certainly use it down by two scores. Jackson on first down. A dump off now to Hill. And he'll be marked down at the 26 with a gain of seven. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are, you know, make him make someone miss in the open field. So we've come upon halftime with the visiting Seahawks. They're out in front. As you want the third quarter already? No problem. Let's do it. Welcome back. Halftime over. We are ready for quarter number three. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Seahawks with the advantage, and they get the football first as the second half is underway. And he will not bring it out. It's a touchback. Here comes the Seahawks offensive unit. They'll have it first to begin the third. As this offense takes the field to begin the opening drive of the second half, Charles, remember that first half, good through the air and really all around an outstanding offensive performance. Absolutely. They've reached the end zone several times. The passing game working awfully well and most importantly, partner. Yeah, they went to the tunnel with a lead. They come back out with that lead. Absolutely. NFL coaches, we know they're perfectionists in a lot of ways, but they had to like what they saw in that first half. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave them with a second and just a few inches left. They'll fake the handoff. Now Smith. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over him that time, and it's going to lead to third down. They went with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field have covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. An incomplete pass on second down leads us to third and inches. They'll try for the first with Walker. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Third down turns to first with that five-yard pickup. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. Play it, play it. 
And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and 10. And maybe the wrong read there as he's going to go down immediately. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Pretty good job there defensively of stringing that one out. Yeah, you've got a quarterback who's waiting and waiting for something to develop. And it just never materialized. And down he went behind the line of scrimmage. Now Gino. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. It's rare that a receiver of his caliber would drop one pass, but that's now two times he's had his mitts on one and lost it. Yeah, and I don't think that they're going to lose confidence in him, though, because of the track record. Such a good player, maybe having a bad game, but I think they'll still go to him in a critical spot. And he goes down. The Ravens able to get to him. A loss of three on the sack made by multiple defenders. To me, the defense was looking a little gassed near the end of the first half, but they've come out of the locker room with a little extra spring in their step. Wonder what they did at halftime to get them so motivated. I don't know, but that sack looked good. Now let's see if they can build on the momentum of that play. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. They'll look to set up his blockers. A punt of 46, a return of five. And the Ravens, they'll take over. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. And their defense did its job by forcing the punt to start things out. And now, Charles, can the offense get in gear? I think, partner, you can sense them saying, OK, the first half was theirs. But now let's get the momentum back on our side. We forced a punt. Now let's go downfield and score. If we do that, we'll be set up well for this second half. They'll run with Edwards here to begin the drive. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Well, they may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Jackson, options out left, and he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards, back to the 33. Yikes, a four-yard loss really sets them back now for second down. And now you have to wonder, partner, at what point in time do they forget the running game? It's been a struggle so far in this one. I would think they'd have to start throwing it a little bit more. Oh, the motion comes too late. Now this is going to be a delay. So they'll go ahead and accept the penalty. Still second down. To throw is Jackson. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Draymond Jones credit him with a sack, and it goes as a loss of six. Well, this is what happens when you get behind the chains, as people like to say, when you have obvious passing situations, hard to vary it up and fool a defense. And you hate those situations if you're an O-lineman, right? Oh, without a doubt, because you just know they're coming, and you never know exactly how they can be. Under pressure, and they got to him again. Bobby Wagner providing a little deja vu back-to-back -back sacks, and now they're staring at a fourth and long. Well, that was an interesting little chess match there because the offense went empty set. No running backs in the backfield, so they're trying to get people out into a route pretty quickly. But guess what? The defense sees that. They go ahead and move, it, move themselves into a blitzing situation and come right after the quarterback. They had more guys there than they could block. So a change of possession here on the punt. And yeah, the Seahawks get ready to trot out on the field. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. Here's Walker to start the drive. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. That's pretty much meat and potatoes right there, wasn't it? Just go right at him and let your big horse charge up the middle. 
Not too fancy there, was it? Nothing fancy at all, challenging that defense. And on that go-around, the offense won the challenge. So the offense, a little antsy. The flag comes out and a five-yard penalty. And that flag accepted. The false start backs him up five, first and 15. Now a play fake, and it's Smith. Oh, there's Lockett pulling in a tough grab. Hook up a 15 yards there, and they'll be left with a second and about a foot. Boy, that completion comes with a high degree of difficulty, especially on the catch. Had to look that one in one-handed, able to do so, and ends up picking up a first down as well. Options galore here, second and a few inches. Out of the gun, Walker with it. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Two yards, good enough for a first. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. Back to Walker on first down. Angelo Black's in there to bring him down. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're a back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300-plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. Ball at the 40 here for second and five. And Walker once more. And he gets it down to the 32. 51 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. I think we're seeing the effect that runs like that are starting to have on this game. They're a little bit slower, that front seven reacting to the football, almost like body blows in boxing, slowing them down, and they're really starting to take over in this game. Straight ahead, Walker. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. They'll try the air now with Smith. They'll lock it with a grab over the middle. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that'll leave them with a third and two. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. They're trying to keep the drive going. This will be play number eight. It's third and two. Back to throw, Smith. That is caught, and he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens' 12-yard line. The third down conversion is successful. Give him 12 yards that time. Partner, I like that they're staying aggressive on offense because, to me, this drive is what is known as a put-away drive. You score here, that might put this one to bed. I like the fact that they're playing with confidence and not playing with fear. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Now it's Smith off the bootleg. That's into the hands of Parkinson, the tight end. The result only four yards there on the play, and it's second down. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down, facing a second and six from the eight. Running left is Walker. A great move, but it only takes him to the seven. He's dropped there. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it's going to make it third down at six. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. The Seahawks on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This will be third and six. Throwing now is Geno. 
He's got his target. That's complete. Touchdown, Seahawks. A seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Seahawks have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. Well, I've heard you use the term put-away drive, and that right there seemed like the definition of a put-away drive. Yeah, it certainly just pops right up out of the book, doesn't it? Because up two scores already, just wanted to possess the football, keep converting and picking up first downs, and if the drive ends in three points, that's terrific. If it ends in a touchdown, fantastic. Extra point up and through by Myers. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. Oh, the return is Duvernay. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. And Baltimore's offense set for this next possession. The last series for him, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 21. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. They lead big, and a major part of that has been how they've taken their play to a whole new level this second half. No points allowed since the break, and you can add another incompletion to the total number that they forced in this runaway contest. Here's second and 10. Here's Jackson to throw. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. Oh, Lamar Jackson just so electric, Charles, when he gets into open space, and we saw exhibit A right there. You know something? I'm standing up here in the booth next to you watching the play. He buckled my ankles on that one as well. <laughs> it doesn't matter whether you're actually on the field trying to chase him or you're just watching him play. This guy is sheer excitement. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. Throwing is Jackson. A short throw caught by Andrews. It'll go as a gain of four at its second down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Second down at six now from the 42. Jackson. And that almost their first INT of the ball game. Had his sights on it, but he couldn't seal the deal. Well, it just seems like all game long, there hasn't been a lot of sync quarterback to wide receiver on this side of the football. They haven't been on the same page, quarterback and receivers. Heck, they haven't been on the same grease board when you draw plays up. They haven't been on the same surface tablet that you look at on the sidelines. Nothing's worked for them. They've got to find a way to start matching each other's movements. It'll be a gain of five. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. I thought maybe when he caught, he'd have a good chance of getting that first down, but that's a nice job of holding him up and preventing him from getting to the sticks. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. Needing the tough yards, they run it with their fullback. And that one opened up for him well as he'll take this down to the 26-yard line. Uh, no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. I don't care what he's listed in the program. Fullback, running back, tailback, it doesn't matter. He ran that play like a fullback. Just like the old days when we saw the fullback dive, how about him picking that one up? Only well, needed a yard on fourth down. That's what he's there for, right? Exactly. Line him up, short yardage situation, and say, here it is, big man. Go get it. 
Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. From the 21, here's second down and five. Now Jackson. It's caught. Beckham. So he'll be stopped here for no gain. And it brings up third and five now. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. They'll break the huddle and come up on the ninth play of this drive, needing five yards on third down. Up the middle. It's Hill. And he takes it down to the 13 and picks up the first. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. This has been a good drive so far, and it's been the running game for the most part that's powered them down there. Another nice burst there, picking up a first down. Now it's first and 10, as you said, in the red zone. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. From the red zone now, here's Jackson on first down. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And that's good for a gain of six, and it'll be second down. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helps to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. Four yards to go on second down from the seven. Jackson from the shotgun. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Uh, defensively, you look at the numbers, another incomplete pass that we just saw, and they're under 200 yards passing for the game, so they've done their job on that side of the ball. Yeah, recently I was actually working a game where a quarterback had a streak of five straight games without a 200-yard game, and that was a big talk, both in his town and amongst his team. How do we get the passing game going? So, big touchdown! Lamar Jackson hooking up with Mark Andrews. And the Ravens have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. So a little bit of a letdown there defensively. I mean, look, you're still two scores to the good, CD, but things may be a little more uncomfortable than they had hoped. Yeah, if you'd kept them out of the end zone there, this game's over. You've locked the door on them. Instead, it's still open a little bit, and they've got a puncher's chance. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and the lead will be cut down to 14. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And the Seahawks, looks like they've recovered. They have. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. On the counter, it's Walker. And I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. Stopped in his tracks and given a loss on that play by Patrick Queen. And what do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time. And that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage. Use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. Now this is a big third down and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. They run again with Walker. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46.
Now here's Michael Dixon as he'll kick it away for the second time. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. Jackson and the Ravens, here they come. Down by two touchdowns. A little under a minute 50 remaining. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. Throwing, Jackson. Jackson hit and he lost the football. And now this ball picked up by the offense. But here in the final two minutes of the game, this will be blown dead. Only the fumbler can advance the football. So this will go back to the spot of the fumble itself. Here comes second down. Jackson. And oh, that is going to be a safety. Well, this defense has been smothering all game long. Why not give them two more points here in the closing minutes? Well, they've certainly earned it. They've gotten the better of this offensive line for four quarters, and this sack here will just be a little icing on the cake. After the safety, remember, they also need to give up the football, and here's the free kick. This is taken at the 23. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And checking the timeouts, they do have two defensively, but no real need to use them as they're not going to be able to stop the clock after that. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. They'll run with Walker to begin the drive. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with 65 seconds remaining. Here's second and five now from the 37. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. Ravens going to use their third and final timeout as they get the stoppage with just over a minute to go in the game. The Seahawks in victory formation as they go ahead and take the knee. Down to a knee, here goes Smith, and that should all but do it. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world, and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something, and they, <laughs> they did in this one. So the victory here for Seattle, and this not always an easy proposition, Charles. You had a West Coast team that traveled east, but they got the job done. And there's so much that goes into it because your body time and your body clock different from what you're used to west because if you go east, you're going to lose up to three hours, right? So is your body going to be awake when it's time to play? A lot of teams actually rehearse it. They practice it. Maybe the week of the game, they move everything up to that time frame so guys get used to doing it that way. I remember when I played at Tennessee, when we had to go from east to west, our trainer Tim Karen said, leave your watches on East Coast time. Every piece of information